members uh, can mean, uh, among uh, many things, uh, the possibility of being precise and being scientific. And from that viewpoint, uh, 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 numbers can be very important in the development of psychiatry as a field that is informed by science, by the scientific method, but uh, which at the same time has a very broad and complex field given that the real subject of psychiatry, I believe, is uh, the person. Uh, uh, and therefore, um, we have to consider a, a number of uh, approaches to understand the complexity of the person, uh, where uh, numbers may have an important role to be as precise as possible uh, in understanding uh, certain aspects of our field uh, but uh, also we need to have uh, qualitative information uh, obtained in order to have a complete uh, understanding of our field in a way that we can uh, not only communicate across the world but also can communicate with one person and be able to delve uh, uh, deeply in what is important for that person. Uh, so I think that uh, numbers are uh, 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 essential to advance uh, in a scientific informed manner uh, but uh, we should never forget that our goal in our field is uh, to serve uh, the person who happens to have a mental illness and, uh, and, uh, and, and for whom therefore we need to be prepared to appraise the situation, appraise the condition and appraise the person's needs and goals uh, in a narrative way as well. I think that uh, for the development of services, as well as more broadly for uh, public health uh, matters, which involve both understanding as well as responding to those needs at the public health level, or community level. Uh, likewise, I think that uh, numbers can be very important. And in fact, uh, as we know, the development of epidemiology, uh, most formally and most recently, has been uh, very, very uh, involved with the use of statistics. Uh, personally, I, I have a PhD in mathematical psychology in addition of being a psychiatrist. And, that, and the reason was because I uh, was very interested to use uh, mathematics and statistics to be able to understand uh, uh, the conditions no? uh, in the form of diagnosis, which is the particular field of research that I have cultivated in my life. Uh, uh, at the same time, we should not forget that epidemiology started with et uh, etno ethnography. Uh, the first uh, models of uh, disease and public health uh, for example, we're uh, dealing with the uh, realities of miasma in, the, in certain areas of London. And uh, the approach to understand miasma and lack of healthiness uh, was to describe the conditions in the field. So, uh, to some extent, we have forgotten those roots. But fortunately, some efforts now are being made to expand uh, uh, epidemiology. For example, in the words of uh, one of the deans of uh, uh, public health in the world, uh, 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 Professor uh, uh, Sasser, Merkin Sasser, from uh, Columbia University in New York, uh, we're moving at, into a new era of epidemiology, uh, the one that he calls ecological epidemiology, but others may also call cultural epidemiology, namely one that uh, first is not focused only on disease, but also on positive health, namely a broader concept of health, and how to assess that with numbers and with uh, narratives as well. So here again, at the public health level, we are challenged with the uh, importance of using as precise numbers as possible to be able to be, understand the situation better, 
uh, but also to be able to predict and be able to intervene you know, more effectively. Uh, but at the same time, uh, understanding that to appraise the reality at the community level, we need to have also narratives uh, so that also our action can be uh, not just at a level of uh, standardized activities, but also those that address the uniqueness of people in the community. Uh, so connected to this, uh, uh, the movement that we are developing on person-centered medicine uh, with the World Medical Association, the World International Alliance of Patients Organizations, recently has been joined by the World Health Organization uh, because they also, uh, by decision of the World Health Assembly, recently uh, uh, is interested of exploring a new approach to public health that they call people-centered care. Uh, so, uh, and people-centered care, they say, different from Alma Ata in the sense that it's not concerned only with uh, health uh, at the most basic level that some of the leaders uh, in WHO may call uh, 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 zoological uh, 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 health but uh, human medicine. And so uh, there is a uh, development of ideas to uh, grasp uh, complexity and to use all levels of analysis and of intervention to be as appropriate as possible to reflect reality as well as to make our interventions more effective. The important thing I think uh, concerning uh, DSM and uh, ICD is that uh, both are, I think, going to be more uh, uh, harmonized than before because there are definite efforts on the part of the American Psychiatric Association and the World Health Organization to try to, uh, to have these uh, two classifications closer to each other. And, and, uh, um, and therefore, probably, because of this greater exchange of information, uh, probably will become a, a better classification system. Uh, and uh, one of the ways in which may be better uh, is that uh, uh, two factors that I'd like to mention. One is that uh, I think there is a greater interest than before to try to uh, set as the basic objective of the classification treatment of the patient, a better treatment of the patient which has to do with the concept of validity in diagnosis. Before, some years ago, the concept of validity was simply how to reflect illness reality as faithfully as possible. Now, validity is also considering how effective is the information obtained, the diagnostic information, to be able to serve as the basis for the planning of care, for which, of course, uh, in addition to illness, one needs to consider a number of other factors, such as the context uh, of the person and his or her needs and aspirations. Uh, so I think this new orientation towards care is uh, going to make, I think, the classifications better than the previous ones. I was involved uh, in DSM-4 as a member of the Security Committee for DSM-4. Uh, so I'm uh, very attentive to the, the developments and also I collaborated with ICD for the development of ICD-10 and was in the committee for the development of ICD-11 also in the first, during my presidency of the World Psychiatric Association. Uh, uh, so I have uh, hopes that the classification really will be better than the previous ones knowing that every classification is never perfect, cannot be perfect, it's just an attempt to try to be more uh, effective in our conceptualization and in the procedures that follow to, to serve as a key uh, tools for our field. But now in addition, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, initiative on person-centered medicine that we are developing with, uh, again, the World Medical Association, the World Federation for Mental Health, the uh, International Alliance of Patients Organizations and, and the World Health Organization. Uh, we are uh, 
try to develop new procedures as well that could serve to implement this perspective of a psychiatry and a medicine that is centered on the person. And, and therefore, uh, our diagnostic procedures that we are in the process of developing, on one hand, we'll try to, again, identify illness as effectively as possible, but also look systematically at positive health, at well-being, uh, including uh, resilience, support factors, uh, and the quality of life that the people may experience, uh, as well as to the uh, needs and goals of the person who presents for help. And uh, uh, therefore a model that we are developing with the name of person-centered integrative diagnosis, uh, centered on the person of the patient, but also integrating perspectives, ill health with positive health, qualitative with quantitative, uh, a frame of reference that is biological, psychological, social, uh, cultural and even spiritual, uh, hopefully will serve us better to uh, fulfill the goals of our profession. In the, uh, in the recent issue of the Canadian Journal of Psychiatry uh, on the review of diagnostic systems that I was uh, asked to, to organize uh, and to, as a guest editor, uh, we review some of these uh, current classifications, uh, DSM, ICD, uh, and then this new approach of person-centered integrative diagnosis. And, and uh, uh, we look at this as uh, uh, complementary approaches to try to advance our field. Well, I'm very excited about our field in psychiatry and in medicine. And I mention in medicine again because uh, not only because uh, the movement that we are working on with uh, other colleagues uh, now formally is expanded to actually not only the totality of medicine, but I would say the totality of health because also the International Council of Nurses, the International Federation of Social Workers, the International Federation of Pharmacists, all have formally uh, uh, decided to collaborate with us, uh, in addition to International Alliance of Patients Organizations, which are joining our board. Uh, and and uh, for, uh, therefore, not only for psychiatry, but for medicine and even health more broadly, uh, as a responsibility of every human being, uh, I think we have much to offer. And, uh, uh, and um, I think we can be proud of our discipline uh, that is moving uh, uh, gradually to uh, uh, improve our approaches, our concepts, uh, uh, try to be more precise in, for example, in our diagnostic system, something that happens periodically every number of years, but also, I think, not being afraid to, uh, to look at, at uh, our field uh, a new time to time to be able to understand it better. And I think in this regard, uh, uh, the increasing focus, not only on disease, but more fully on the whole uh, human being. And not only the human, uh, the wholeness of the person of the patient, but the person of the clinician as well. And, uh, uh, and, and the person in the family, and other members of the community, so that we are not seen as simple uh, functional entities that have a role to fulfill, but as uh, individuals with a history and a future who happen to in be engaged in, in this process. Uh, uh, so I think that uh, uh, with uh, trying to be uh, more uh, encompassing and clear in our conceptualizations, and more precise and abarcative as well in our procedures, I think we um, can be uh, uh, excited and optimist that uh, we uh, may be able to move on, uh, forward uh, to advance uh, the health for all involved, uh, our patients and ourselves as, uh, as clinicians. So you are confident in our future? You know, uh, Dr. Blorino, I think that 
uh, the only way for a clinician to be is to be optimist. Uh, we face many problems that are chronic. In fact, most of the problems in our field, in fact, in the general human health field, are chronic problems. That is why now, that uh, right now in uh, New York, not only WHO but the whole United Nations are focusing right now this month on the problems of chronic diseases because this is a real challenge. For the world. And chronic diseases uh, are. Uh, uh, not only the most prevalent and most responsible for morbidity and mortality in the world, but have the particular feature of requiring the involvement of the people who have those diseases to have any hope of dealing with them. No. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, 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 I think that this is a good moment for us to uh, to, to consider the. the possibility of moving forward uh, in a way that uh, we have reasonable chances to do better than we have been able to do. Uh, and, uh, and, and when we not only think about theories and policies that are pretty broad level, but uh, about the drama of our interaction with another human being who presents as a patient asking for our, uh, our help having a chronic disease or many other, whatever disease they, they have. Uh, I think our responsibility from the beginning of the diagnostic interview is to instill in that person a sense of hope so that uh, uh, that person can, can be willing to continue to engage with us in this process of uh, improving his or her health. And uh, how we can motivate people to be hopeful if we are not optimistic, even when we may think that the odds for success are not very high. So uh, that's why I'm suggesting that to be a clinician one has to be uh, optimistic as a basic attitude.